Hi everyone and welcome to video number four on Henry VIII and his chief ministers. Now, if you remember back on video number two, I was talking about the way that England and its society was structured. And I said that it was very, very difficult to rise up the ranks of the hierarchy. If you were born down here, you lived your life down here and you died down here. If you were born rich, powerful and wealthy, well then you lived your life up in the top levels. It was very difficult to move. However, ladies and gentlemen, there are always exceptions to the rule. And video number four is about one such man. And his name? Thomas Wolsey, sometimes known as Cardinal Wolsey. Now, what was this man all about? Born we think 1471 in Ipswich, nowhere near London, the centre of power, he's out in the provinces. His father was a butcher, so he's the son of a butcher. That's down at this level, ladies and gentlemen. But by 1515, Thomas Wolsey was the Lord Chancellor of England. He had risen right up to be just below King Henry VIII. Wow, how did he manage that? That's quite a rise. It's quite a journey, ladies and gentlemen. How did he get there? What were the reasons for his rise to power? That's what this video hopefully will talk about and give you some ideas. As I said, he was the son of a butcher. Now, normally he would have been a butcher He'd have followed his father, being a chip off the old block, as the saying goes. Or, seeing as his dad was a butcher, a chop off the old block. <laughs> Sorry about that. But he rose to power. How? When I was growing up in the 1970s, there was a television program called Record Breakers. And people would go on it who'd entered into the Guinness Book of Records. And the theme tune was all about dedication and working hard. But for Thomas Wolsey, yes, he worked hard. But to paraphrase that song, it was education, whoa, education. It's what you need if you want to be the best, if you want to beat the rest. Education's what you need. Education was vital, ladies and gentlemen, for Thomas Wolsey. He was a highly intelligent young man. A member of his family, uh, an uncle, actually helped him out and paid for him to go to Oxford University, where aged 15, roughly about the age that you're doing your GCSEs, Wolsey passed his degree. He was nicknamed the Boy Bachelor. He was a very clever young man. He was also very ambitious. And so because of that, he went into the church because the church was a good way of trying to move up, trying to advance. He trained to be a priest. 1501, he becomes the chaplain to the Archbishop of Canterbury, a very important man in the church. He starts to meet important people. Wolsey's beginning, his rise He's beginning to make contacts. By 1507, he's the chaplain or the priest to King Henry VII. He's now based in the king's court. And once he's there, remember I said he was hugely intelligent. Once he was there, he begins to display and show his considerable abilities. He goes on diplomatic missions for King Henry VII. He was a very charming man, very persuasive, full of flattery. He was very effective. The king would set him a task and Wolsey would accomplish it. He would do as he was asked. He was very hardworking and he displayed great stamina. He's impressing people. Now, when Henry VII died, and Henry VIII takes over. 1509, Wolsey was now a member of the Royal Council. 
he's again continuing this steady rise. He's at the court. King Henry VIII is aware of him. He's showing his qualities. Wolsey has got access to Henry VIII, where he's able to show, use his qualities, charming, persuasion, flattery. Wolsey also, at this particular time in his career, had two strokes of luck. Number one, the first thing, Henry VIII. Yes, he's the king, but he's still quite a young man towards the end of his teenage years. Well, teenagers, oh, this is boring. Teenagers can get bored about things that aren't particularly interesting to them. Henry VIII found the day-to-day -day administration of governing the country tedious, boring. He was very happy to leave it to somebody else. And who would Henry VIII decide to leave it to? This very, very good young man, Wolsey. So Wolsey is beginning to take responsibility given to him by Henry VIII. Second stroke of luck. Henry VIII, new king, did not like some of the old advisers to the old Henry VII. He thought that they were boring, too cautious. Some of them were arrested and a couple of them were actually executed by Henry VIII. Henry VIII says, I need a new start. I'm the new king. Let's have a new beginning. We need a new face in charge. And who would that be? Of course, you've got it now. Step forward, Thomas Wolsey. So Wolsey's beginning to emerge as this new force, this new power given to him by Henry VIII. And then a third stroke of luck, he gets his big break, his big opportunity. And Wolsey took this chance with both hands. He seized it and he used it to cement his place as the top minister to Henry VIII. What was this big opportunity? Any ideas? 1512. War between England and France. Now, Henry VIII is very interested in war. He didn't find that boring. No, no, no. He's after the glory and the power and the prestige and the manliness. He loves that sort of thing. But what Henry VIII isn't as keen on, boring, is the stuff that you need before you can actually fight your war. So it's to Thomas Wolsey, this task of preparing the army, organising it, equipping it. This was the nitty gritty. This was Wolsey's big opportunity because Henry said, I'm going to fight a war, but I need all the other stuff doing for me. Wolsey, do it. And Wolsey provided Henry VIII with a well-organised, well-equipped, well-supplied army. It was a very difficult task, but Wolsey did it well. He was ruthless. Remember I said he was ambitious and he impressed Henry VIII with his qualities and his loyalty. As a reward for doing the job so well, as I said at the start of the video, 1515, Thomas Wolsey, son of a butcher, becomes the Lord Chancellor of England. He has risen and is the chief minister to King Henry VIII. At the same time that he's developing his political power, remember I said about the church earlier, 1514, Wolsey became Bishop of Lincoln and Archbishop of York. 1515, the Pope made him a cardinal. Wolsey was now very powerful. He had power for the king and from the king, and he had power through the church. 
by 1518, he was named and became a papal legate. He outranked all churchmen in England. He was supremely powerful. So much so that he was given another nickname. Remember I said he was, used to be called the Boy Bachelor. But now that he's man, a man, he was known as Alter Rex. And that means simply a second king. Yes, King Henry VIII, he's the main power in the country. But his chief minister is now so powerful, he was known as a second king, Alter Rex. He's now hugely powerful and he's hugely wealthy. Called a second king. He lived like one. He lived like a second king. As I said, extremely wealthy, second only to Henry VIII himself. He was at least 10 times richer than the next richest person. He had jewels, he had tapestries, he had beautiful clothing, he had superb buildings that were very well decorated, extremely opulent. Couple of examples of his buildings, York House and the palace at Hampton Court where he himself had a household of 500 servants. A son of a butcher, 500 servants. Wow, he's moved his way up, ladies and gentlemen. He's not down here anymore or here. He's passed them all. He's just below King Henry VIII. He set up his own college at Oxford University. Remember, he'd been... So he was very interested in education. He set it up called Cardinal College, renamed nowadays Christchurch College. So to sum up, this man, this son of a butcher, instead of just leading his life there quietly in Ipswich, chopping up sheep and cows, etc. No, no, no. He became rich. He became powerful. He became hugely influential. He was extremely intelligent, talented, hardworking, ruthless. Wolsey had arrived. He'd come a long way for a butcher's son. As he was known at the time, someone quoted about him and said, His Majesty's second self. He almost represented Henry VIII. He had arrived. So, the rise of Thomas Wolsey, they're the reasons for it. But now that he's there, Chief Minister, and he's such a powerful force in England, of course, the next key question what is Wolsey going to do with all of this power? How is what Wolsey does? going to impact and change England, working with Henry. What does Wolsey do? So the next video, coming soon, we will look at Wolsey's actions as Chief Minister, known to us historians now, ladies and gentlemen, as Wolsey's reforms. So that's coming soon. As ever, I hope it's been useful. The rise of Thomas Wolsey. All the best now. Hope to see you soon. Bye now.